Hello everyone, we will continue the topic table buffering and under that we will continue the topic full record buffering and in the previous video we discussed that in case of full record buffering full data will come into the buffer and we simply simply selected the checkbox full record buffering as a part of technical settings and whenever we run the program the whole table data is in the buffer of the application layer after that whenever we are running the program yes the details are coming from the buffer there is no need to go to database layer now we will continue the topic in the previous video we put so much stress on a point that tables which has frequently access data and rarely change data we should opt for full buffering if a table has transaction data we should never never opt for full buffering if a table has transaction data how we can store this much record onto the buffer of application layer so it will occupy more memory because the transaction data is continuously increasing now we will simply simply expand the point why why we should opt the tables which has frequently access data and rarely change data suppose as of now this is the data of the table and we are going for a understanding that this data is not changing at all or rarely change scenario so whenever i want to display any of the details i can simply simply use this particular buffer just think if the table data is continuously changing then what will happen suppose i am changing the details of order number suppose 1 to 5 suppose i am changing the payment mode and amount of order number 1 to 5 then in that case what will happen suppose i change the uh, payment mode of order number 1 to 5 as credit card and amount I changed to 1000 rupees. So just think in that case, this buffer has any significance at all. This buffer has not any significance at all. This buffer will be refreshed automatically because if this buffer will not refresh and we will use this buffer to display the output so customer will tell i am getting a wrong output so if you are going for full buffering then if you are going for full buffering whose table data is continuously changing then buffer has no significance at all because buffer has to refresh at that point of time buffer contents will be zero at that point of time otherwise it will be a mismatch but if that data is not changing yes we put into the buffer and we are using the buffer to display the output suppose if i will go to sm30 transaction code suppose I'm changing the details of few order numbers. So, 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 so to give you the best clarity, suppose I am going to SM30 transaction port and I'm changing the details of few order numbers. I will wait. I think system is slow. Okay, suppose I'm going for order number one to five. Suppose I'm changing the amount to thousand rupees for order number one to five.
Now for order number one to five, I changed the total amount. I have not saved yet. In the buffer, we have the amount 900. Whenever I will save this, now the updated data for order number one to five is total amount is thousand rupees. Now, if I will go for this buffer, this buffer has to be refreshed. This buffer has to be cleared. Otherwise, we will get a wrong output. So whenever I will refresh this, you can see buffer cleared automatically. So if you are going for frequently change data as full buffering, so in that case, what will happen? Your previous buffer values has no significance at all. And SAP will clear that buffer because ultimately if SAP is not clearing the buffer, we will get a wrong result because database has something else and your application layer buffer has something else. So SAP simply invalidated this particular buffer. So we should always, always opt the full buffering whenever that data is rarely changing at all and not at all changing. If data is not changing, one time we will load that data into the buffer and we will always, always use that buffer to display the output. Now I will come on to the advantage and disadvantage of full record buffering. What is the advantage of full record buffering? Number of database access is significantly reduced. Why we are saying this? Because your whole table data came into the buffer. Next time, there is no need to go to database layer at all because your whole data is in the buffer. Whenever you want to display, you can simply, simply use that buffer to display. Now, what is the disadvantage of full record buffering? Yes, it occupies more memory on the application layer because we are storing full table data onto the buffer of application layer. So yes, definitely it will occupy more memory on the application layer. So if we are simply, simply comparing in case of single record buffering, what is the advantage? It will occupy less memory. But in case of single record buffering, advantage is it occupies less memory. But what is the disadvantage becomes a disadvantage in case of full record buffering because if the number of records are more, so it will occupy more memory. In case of single record buffering, what is the disadvantage? Your database access has not significantly reduced because you are storing single record in the buffer at a time. In case of full record buffering, we are storing full data into the buffer. So disadvantage of single record buffering becomes a advantage in case of full record buffering because number of database access is completely reduced. So that's it. It's all about the full record buffering. So in this video, we put stress on a point that why, why we are going for tables which has frequently access data and rarely change data and what is the advantage and disadvantage of full record buffering. Now in the next video, we will start with our last type of buffering that is generic India buffering. So that's it in this video. Thank you.